hey guys um welcome back to the channel if you subscribe thank you you know if you watch all my videos thank you but i'm just gonna get into it because it's gonna be a really quick video i don't want to bore you guys with this um i've just got this question a couple times so from what i've been asked a couple times is how far does the hair follicle test go how far back does it go am i safe will i pass will i fail so here's the rundown i've done plenty of research and even when i've went and got both of my hair follicle tests um i asked a lot of questions and i actually read up on um a lot of i wouldn't say reviews but a lot of medical like blogs and stuff about it um because honestly that was one thing i was curious about when i went to get mine um anyone who really knows me and i mean i'll put this out there like i don't smoke on a regular basis obviously i don't smoke at all now but um beforehand like teenagers you know that's all i'm gonna say teenagers but we won't get into that so the hair follicle test first it's not actually a hair follicle test the hair follicle is actually up under the scalp and of course they don't yank your hair out they cut it so they actually cut it right at the scalp but they don't pluck your hair to get the follicle so yes they call it a hair follicle test but is that what it actually is no so from what i've been told by nurses and even doctors and even on these medical blogs these hair follicle tests don't go back but about three months um and basically they are using these tests as it's a more accurate and a better way to catch someone using you know drugs um they mostly look for marijuana which we all know you can you know smoke a couple blunts do whatever and then basically pee it all out within a day or two if you don't use all the time it's not that hard to pass a you know a pee test it's really not that hard um I've never had that issue I've never had to worry about it so whatever but coming from the person I am with the anxiety I'm here to relieve you of that and hopefully help you make not only the right decision but alleviate some of that anxiety behind this hair follicle test now oh my hair y'all speaking of hair follicles um so ladies I know the first question I always get is how much hair are they taking they're not taking a lot and they are going to start they are basically going to take from the back of your head right at like the little nape of your neck what they're going to do is they're going to get you to flip your hair forward snip it you're done um can you tell they did it yes but they do it at the back of your head so it's no issue um me having really long hair of course they they took the whole long strand because again they want it from right at your scalp because that's where that new growth is which is where they're going to be able to tell you know what you're doing um and now i've saw where a couple of places that okay so we all know there are different hair types and hair textures and i'm not educated enough to like accurately say this so bear with me. I'm not trying to be malicious. I'm trying to give you some information. Um, I know that typically if you have more textured hair, so really, you know, kinky, curly hair, or just really textured hair, they tend to take more. Um, now, is this the case all the time? I don't know, but from what I have been told, what I research I've done, and what I've even spoke to nurses about, they typically have to take more um, because, you know, our hair, mine, I have uh, textured hair, just really, obviously, curly, crazy hair. So, they did take quite a bit. Um, if you have, like, straight, like, smooth hair, they probably won't take as much. But, ladies, do not, and gentlemen, do not worry about them, like, cutting all your hair off. You're not really going to be able to tell um ladies and gentlemen with shorter hair now they don't need a lot to do this they really don't um and so again don't worry like if you have long hair you're not going to be able to tell like i could tell because when she took it out i was like whoa and then of course i looked 
but they're not going to take it in the spot. Like, if they try to take it up here, no. Be like, can you do it at the back of my head? Just ask them if they don't, like, say anything. But speaking of back of my head, it is a mess. But I'm sorry, guys. You know how the trucking world goes. So, other information I have on that. Um, again, these tests, they go back about three months. Now, I know they say, oh, it all depends on how... Um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How sensitive these tests are. Okay, let me tell you something. Yes, these tests are sensitive. Yes, they typically are able to pick up on very l small traces of drugs, especially marijuana. Um, and now they can find just about anything. They, it's like, I think it's a 12 panel test. Now, depending on the company, depending on how much money, you know, the company's going to go spend, depends on how many panels they run. And, you know, that obviously means the variation of drugs that they will be able to find in your hair. Um, so again, typically you go back three months. Now, here's the thing. This test is not designed to catch the occasional user. It is designed to catch chronic users of these drugs. Now, I'm mainly talking about marijuana here. I don't know about any of the other drugs, so I'm mainly talking about weed. Um, so if you say you ate an edible a month, and this is like the only little bit of marijuana, weed, whatever you want to call it, that you have consumed, and you get a call a month later, and you are freaking out, don't worry, you're fine. Again, this test is designed to catch chronic users of the drug. I'm going to put this as a disclaimer. I do not know about the other drugs. I am talking about weed. Now, I do know some medications can come up in your hair. Make it very clear with, you know, the doctor. And if something comes back positive on you and you know for a fact, fight it. They know what medications will throw it off, and if it's something that they didn't know about, they're going to test it, and then they will find out the truth. Simple as that. Um, so again, if you use it every day, and they call you in, and you think you're going to get all these shampoos on the market, cleansing shampoos that they have, they have pills, you know, same thing about getting it out of your urine, <laughs> buddy, you're going to fail. I'm sorry. Um, these tests take from the root. It grows out of our head. So if you think you're a chronic user, you're like, oh, I'm just going to shave my head. First of all, if you're that dedicated to trying to get around a drug test, you got a problem. You got a problem. Just stop using drugs. And I don't mean to be that blunt about it, but I'm sorry. It's true. Okay. Say you're a chronic user. You get called. Hey, yeah, we need you. So you're just going to shave your head. I'm just going to shave my head. I'm going to shave my legs. Well, let's see, honey, you better get rid of every little piece of hair on your body. They will take from, obviously, your head, your eyebrows, your legs, your arms, your underarms, your feet, wherever they can find it. And if you have that much hair on your feet, I'm so sorry. Um, and if you decide to literally go hairless, guess what? They're not going to do the test anyway, and you're not going to get the job. If you're completely hairless, that is a sign of, hey... This person probably uses drugs. If you have a medical condition, I'm sure there's other ways around this. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure you have to prove that you actually have a medical condition as to why you don't have any hair. Um, so there's that. So don't think you can get around it just by shaving your head, shaving your eyebrows, shaving all this, because I've seen it done. And when I was doing all the research, I've seen where people's like, yeah, it just doesn't work. Obviously. Ah, uh, what else? So yeah, don't shave your stuff. And if you have any doubt in your mind, just don't go. Don't do it. Simple as that. Um, now, I know for people like me who worry for absolutely no reason, because I'm sitting here like, what if I took a medication that's going to come up? Like, I don't ever do drugs. I have too much anxiety and I'm too paranoid, I'm paranoid to do anything. I get paranoid. I got paranoid about a, te a drug test that I know I haven't even done drugs. So, Again, this is for the people like me who still have anxiety about medications coming up or, you know, just a freak accident happening. If you're fine, you are fine. Again, if you smoked a blunt, if you ate an edible, if you hit the bowl a couple times, you're going to be okay. 
again, it's chronic users. You're fine. And that's it. Like, these things are not like, oh, they smoke one time, pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. So don't worry about it. Now, chronic users, I do recommend waiting three to six months. Some of these things supposedly are sensitive enough to go back six months. So chronic users, A, you know this industry does not put up with drugs or alcohol at the job. So if you are looking to get your CDL, I advise you to stop smoking, stop eating your edibles, stop, you know, drinking's fine up until you drive. Obviously you can't drive drinking. Um, so yeah, if you are looking to get into this industry, I advise you even before you get your CDL to just stop. Simple as that. I'm not sitting here saying that I don't, that I have a problem with people who, you know, smoke. I don't do it. You do your thing. I'm going to do my thing, but I'm letting you know this industry has a zero tolerance policy basically you know if you test positive you're out I don't know what it does to your CDL but I know if you're caught you know basically under the influence of anything behind these trucks pretty sure you lose your license so just don't do it you know get clean before you try to come into the industry and if you can't maybe this isn't a job for you I know plenty of people who do it anyway and I've known plenty of people to lose their careers over it so I just wanted to get on here and clarify that for you guys. Um, this doesn't really have to do with my channel necessarily, but it kind of does. I've had this question asked by multiple people. So yes, um, if you're not a chronic user, you should be fine. Uh, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. Don't sit here and be like, oh, well, you know, she said so. Don't bring this shit back on me because I'm just telling you what I know, my experience, and what I've been told from medical professionals. So there's that. If something, again, if something does come up positive and you know for a fact, fight it, you know, talk to the company, tell them about it. Go back to that doctor, show them all the proof of your medications. And I mean, from like six to eight months to a year back. So if something is in your hair, blah, 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 blah. So again, don't think cutting your hair is going to work. Don't think stopping a week before is going to work. Don't think like you can bring your own hair because you can't. So the process behind that test, you go in and I had to do a urine and a hair follicle test. So, you know, they do that simply because in the urine, they can see if I've done it within a day, the hair follicle, they can tell if I'm a chronic user. So they did both. And this is with Swift, by the way, Swift does do both. So what they do is both places I, you go in and basically they take you up to a counter they wash their hand, put on gloves, they're doing this all in front of you. And they bring out, it's like an envelope, a paper bag, a couple test tubes. Sorry. Whew, I have really bad heartburn. Um, well, what looks like test tubes. A pair of scissors. Um, and a couple of like labels. And what they'll do is they will ask you, obviously, take your hair down, do whatever you need to do. And they ask you to flip it. They do not touch it. They don't touch your hair. They only touch, you know, the strand they're going to take. And they normally take it from the back of the head as close to the scalp as possible. They're trying to get that new growth. So, again, they don't take much. They just clip, you know, it's so, if you have long hair, you know, it's going to be a long strand. But it's not going to be a lot of volume of hair, if that makes sense. And basically what they do is they clip it and you watch them put it in this like plastic little baggie and then seal it up and you sign it and then they send it off. So everything is like you see everything. You sign documents saying, you know, I saw them cut it. I saw them put it in the bag, blah, 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 blah. This is me. This is who did it. There's no saying, oh, that's probably not my hair. And don't think... <laughs> Okay, so I've, I had the doctor that I, you know, went and got mine done at, told me someone tried to get away with basically shaving their head and wearing a wig. First, pretty sure a medical professional knows what a wig looks like. And second, you better get you a real good quality wig. That's all I'm saying because... I don't even know. I don't think that's even possible to get around. Just don't do it. If you know you're going to fail, don't do it. So advice from me, if 
you're not a chronic user, I think you're going to be just fine. If you are a chronic user, just stop for, I'd say, up to six to eight months before you even try to come into the industry. And if you can't wait that long, find a job who doesn't hair follicle. Do hair follicles, which, good luck. Most of them do. Most of the bigger companies do. Smaller companies, of course, they probably just do a pee test. So go find you a job like that until you can actually get clean long enough to pass the hair follicle test. If you fail one, it's going to be harder to find a job to take you. Um, a lot of applications say, have you failed any drug tests? And once you put yes, mm, I'm not saying they're not going to hire you, but they're going to think twice. So again, I just wanted to get on here and tell you guys that. Um, thank you for subbing. And if you're not sub, please sub to the channel. This is basically a channel for people trying to get their CDLs. Um, people who just got their CDLs and honestly people who've been in the game for a while. I just get on here, run my mouth, say my take on it since I'm decently new, try to help the new people and honestly help my women out here. So shout out to all the women on my channel. I'm so excited we're growing and I have something in store for everyone. Um, I'm hoping to get things up and running here soon. Bear with me. Things are crazy. You guys know how the life is out here. Again, any more questions regarding any of the testing for Swift, any of just anything about Swift, just know I don't mind answering questions. It might take me a minute to get back to you. Just I ask you just to be patient with me and I would definitely get back to you. Hit me up on my email with um, if something is more personal question um, that you don't really want to share with everyone. If you email me at faithalexisborn at gmail.com, I will definitely get back to that. That is actually my YouTube email. So just put, you know, a subject line in it and just email me, you know, explain your question or whatever it may be. Please only use it for relevant topics. Please do not be creepy. Please do not be dumb. Um, that's all I ask. Just if you have questions, if you want to tell me like your experience with something, that's great. Don't be creepy about it. Um, ladies, Chris, you're always welcome. And I am so happy with the growth of this channel. Thank you all. And again, that email, I'll tr put it in the description. It's faithalexisborn at gmail.com. So that's going to be F-A-I-T-H. A-L-E-X-I-S-B-O-U-R-N-E -E at gmail.com. So thank you all for listening to me ramble. I hope that video helped clarify a couple of things. Again, hit the like button, share it with a friend, comment down below, send me an email, and we'll get some more videos produced. I guess produced content maybe is better. But anyway, good night y'all. I'm hitting the sleeper. I gotta be up in like four hours. So be safe, keep it between the ditches, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Bye!